Dear friends, I welcome you to this week's Sunday Reflection. Today, the Holy Mother Church celebrates the solemnity of Christ the King. The readings of today speak of the sheep and the goats, especially the first reading and the gospel reading. But then, should we be speaking about the goats and the sheep when today Christ ascends the throne as the King of the universe? Certainly, yes, we should be speaking about it. You know why? Because when Christ ascends the throne as King of the universe, He will give protection and concern to His sheep. Unlike what we have with our leaders, our politicians, and our teachers today. And then again, in the first reading, we see how corrupt the shepherds and leaders, princes and priests, who were kept to be in control of the people of Israel. Instead of becoming in control, they took advantage and were becoming, and were becoming richer and richer. And so, it is good for Christ. It is good to speak of the sheep and the goods because Christ himself as the good shepherd today ascending the throne will become a good shepherd for us who will give protection and concern for us. And that is why the theme of our reflection this week will be God, the judge who saves. God is the king, the judge who saves. Now in the first reading from the book of prophet Ezekiel chapter 34, the book of prophet Ezekiel highlights God's concern over his people and direct intervention over the people of Israelites in the hands of the Babylonians. And this is this. The people of Israel, while in the hands of Babylonians, were into a deep crisis. A crisis where the Babylonians dominated them and then spread cruelty and violence upon them. Then within this condition, Prophet Ezekiel emerged simply because that the prince and princes who were placed in charge of the people of Israel, rather than helping them, consoling them, and then helping them get out of the hands of the people of Babylonians, took advantage of them and were becoming more and more richer and richer as against helping the people of Israelites. Now, within this context, the message of Ezekiel sprung up. And so, God took the opportunity of taking a direct decision. Direct decision of becoming a direct shepherd of the people of Israel as against the corrupt shepherds. And so, God now compared the people of Israel as a scattered people, a scattered flock, where God promised to bring them together and promised to bring them to their lands, saving them from the hands of the Babylonians, and then giving them direct protection, feeding them and helping them. God did this and gave a message of warning to the people, to the shepherds of the house of Israel over this cruel nature of their, their leadership, over this unconcerned nature of their leadership, and over this, their corrupt nature of their leadership. And so, dear friends, in the second reading, from the first letter of Corinth, first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, here, St. Paul tries to explain to his audience in Corinth of the kingdom of the Messiah and the kingdom of God. And so St. Paul, St. Paul explains that the kingdom of, kingdom of the Messiah is a kingdom that will sustain till the end of time. And that the Messiah is going to defeat his enemies, the enemies of man. Suffering, slavery, disease, sin, selfishness. And that when these are defeated, Christ is going to hand over the kingdom of the Messiah to his father, where the kingdom of God will begin. Now, St. Paul explains that Christ by dying did not only deprive death of total destruction, he also transformed death into new birth that will lead to new life. As becoming, as becoming the first person who passed through this, whoever, whoever, dies and dies in Christ and with Christ 
who will rise in Christ and enjoy the eternal salvation. Now, dear friends, in the Gospel reading, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 35, verse chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. Christ speaks of the last judgment once again. And so Christ speaks, uses the sheep and the goat, separating the sheep and the goat to explain the experience of the last judgment. But then, using this to call the people, his people to order, helping them to avoid what will make them experience the fate of uh, those who will be condemned in the last days. And so Christ, this, the gospel is divided into two. The first, that when Christ ascends the throne as the king of the universe, he shall bring together all scattered people of God and then at the same time separate the sheep from the good. In our day-to-day -day experience of the sheep and the good, we know that the sheep they are the vulnerable type of animals who cannot who find them, who, uh, their vulnerability makes them difficult to, to survive within the night. And so the shepherd tries to collect them, put them into a closure where they could be safe for the night. And then in the daytime, they could go out for grazing. But the goats are such a, are such a strong type of animal, animals that can survive in an open place and even survive outside, even in the night. So sheep, we can find, even sheep, when they find themselves on the way, find it difficult even to get out of a car. So Christ uses this our everyday practical example to explain what the kingdom of God would look like. The love of our neighbor is a concern that Christ calls us to. That when we love our neighbor, it explains our love for man, our love for God. And so Christ says, whatever you do to the least of my brethren, that you do unto me. Christ tries to explain that we should see him in our neighbor. And so giving food to the hungry, thirst, water to the thirsty, helping our not what the church teaches us about the corporal works of mercy, visiting the sick, visiting those who are in prison, and helping those who are in need. This is what we do it. We build what St. Paul says, the kingdom of the Messiah here on earth and preparing ourselves for the kingdom of the eternal kingdom of God that lasts and sustains eternally. Here we shall enjoy with God and with, with, with the angels. Dear friends, this teaches us that God, God finds pleasure when we love and care for our neighbors. And when we do this, we build the kingdom of Messiah on earth and prepare ourselves for the kingdom of God in heaven. And again, again, we should also remember that those who neglect this treasure, love of God and love of neighbor, who find and, enjoy, and suffer the fate of those who, at the end of the day, were regretting, Lord, when, when did we see you hungry and we did not give you food? And so Christ tries to help us to avoid this faith so as to become good Christians, so as to enjoy the eternal glory of God in heaven. And so, dear friends, when we love our fellow human beings, when we care for them, even in their needs, when we show concern in their situations, we behave like sheep. And so, but when we behave selfishly, we behave like good. Let us pray, let us pray that the good Lord will help us. So at the end of the day, like he promised, that the sheep will be at his right hand and the good at his left hand. So then let us pray that we'll be on the right hand of God so that all the blessings, salvation will be ours through Christ our Lord.